Hello again. Um, in this video I'll show you how I go about jacking up the rear of the car and supporting it. Um, I was asked uh, after the last video by Richard on Hiland, LotusHiland.net um, how I did this because um, it's a bit troublesome I guess. So I'll show you my method. Uh, please do make your own judgment about it. Um, I wouldn't like you to use this method and damage anything. So this is the method I use and um, see what you make of it. I think you probably spotted I support the car on these dollies um, when it's parked up in the garage which means I can move it around pretty readily. Um, so I've got to manage jacking it up on, onto these dollies as well so I'll cover that as well. So key part to jacking up the rear is um, this block of wood which is cut to fit under the rear A-frame and you'll see this weird shaping that's to make it fit inside the inside of the uh, wheel rim and then just reduce the thickness here because this is where the the bushes fit in is slightly um, deeper than the rest of the A-frame so the idea is to support maybe some of the bottom hub on here um, but the rear A-frame as it goes away from these joints and not to damage the rear brakes so by having that nice clearance in for the brake disc so that's what it's like I'll put it on a flat surface and put a tape measure on it just so you can get an idea of the size of it um, but yeah let's get the back end jacked up on this to start with so I'm gonna this wooden block or plank, whatever, uh, is going to fit underneath the A-frame and the rear hub and the clearance on the brake disc. And then I'm going to jack it up as close to the outside as you can. Clearly I've got this dolly slightly in the way. Um, so I want to lift the wheel up without letting the suspension droop because I'm paranoid about the rubber donuts. So this is my approach. You could, of course, jack it up on the chassis, but the suspension would fully droop. And um, I don't want to let the rubber donuts um, get under that much strain, really, of being fully drooped down. So wooden block goes under there, and then any small jack, scissor jack, I've got the original Lotus jack um, that I'm using at the moment, but I'll probably buy a small scissor jack. And of course this is on the dolly at the moment, so this is quite a bit higher than it normally would be. So I'll get it off these and put it um, down on the ground first on both sides and then you can see what it's like jacking it up off the ground. Let's just get it a bit higher first. So I've got to make sure it fits inside the rim of the wheel at both sides. Clears the brake disc, so clearly don't want to jack up on that. Um, yeah. So it sort of finds its own place with those shapes in, it's pretty easy. Drop it down onto the floor with the wheel on. So we're on the floor at this side. Oh, I've got all that dust. So I'll do the same procedure for the other side. Um, you don't need to see it and then I'll come back and do this side again. This same piece of work works for both sides, by the way, so I've made sure that it will fit both ways. Okay, so I've got the other side off the dolly, so now it's on the floor. Suspension's not quite um, fully down, but the gap at the outside um, here is 
as low as it's going to be, more or less. So I'll show you um, that I can jack it up off there and take the wheel off. I've already loosened the spinner, so whilst it's on the ground. Um, so I'll jack it up, take the wheel off, and then I'll show you how I sort of fully support the hub as well. So I've got the jack um, pretty central um, and as tucked in as close to the wheel as I can. A scissor jack I suspect you get a little bit closer. So I'm trying to spread the load over that end of the hub and the A-frame. Um, definitely don't want to jack it up in the middle of the A-frame because probably bend it. It's not designed for that. So. And that's as far as it needs to go. Just get the wheel off. Okie doke, let me show you how I um, support the hub. You can see the bottom part of the hub here with this metal piece in the bottom of the aluminium. So that's what I've supported it off. Um, so I'm going to use blocks of wood and just build it up. I'll jack it up a little bit more so it can sit on top of that third piece so I don't have to drop it down too far. Um, so let me just do that. So I can get a piece of wood in underneath there and then I can just lower it down onto that. There we go. So I'd probably leave the jack under if I could. If I was just working on that one side and I didn't need access where the jack was. Um, otherwise you can just take the jack out of the way. So it's just sat on the bottom of that um, uh, hub. So the jack would come out of the way then. So I'll just jack it back up and show you how that piece of wood is supporting the A-frame on top of the jack. Here's the jack supporting the piece of wood I showed you earlier. So I'm spreading the load out over this end of the A-frame. Clearance for that brake disc and you can see where I've cut the wood away because this is a thicker section than the rest of it so it's supporting as much of that A-frame as possible. Oh, and just to show you it isn't, um, isn't supported on the brake disc. Um, just in case you're not familiar with it, those are the donuts, the rubber uh, couplings in the drive shaft. And there's two of them on this original uh, drive shaft. Lots of um, it lands have been converted to either only have one or even um, CV joints both ends of the little half shaft. So that's the bit I'm avoid, avoiding stressing by preventing the um, or, or not needing to allow the wheel to fully droop. Um, if you jack the car up on the body, which was the original position, of course, the suspension would fully droop. Uh, another technique I was using for jacking the car earlier on when I, well maybe didn't even have the suspension in place was this block when I was jacking, jacking it on the chassis if, when I wasn't worried about donuts or if you're not worried about letting them droop or if you don't have donuts in your drive shaft you could use this technique so this has just got some clearance holes because there's some fixing nuts and that's clearance for the exhaust and that will go right underneath at the back I have to say when it's on uh, the dollies it's easy enough to get a trolley jack underneath that. When it's on the floor um, that's a bit thick actually and it's tricky to get a trolley, trolley jack underneath but I'll show you where it goes anyway. This is a bit tricky to see but here's the front of the A-frame so this is the where the body 
um, is at the front of the rear wheel arch and you can see one of the chassis fixing um, screws there so that's um, what the clearance is in this block of wood for at this side and it um, it goes up there so it's um, so it goes there across this part here and supports the chassis where the chassis is bolted to the body and uh, it's perfectly strong place to jack the car up. It's 325 millimeters overall. It's 20 millimeters thick. My brake disc grooves about 110 long by well, 15 mil wide by mm, 14 mil deep at the deepest. Um, I've removed that down to about 15 mil here. And that section is just under 200 millimetres width, 115 there and 140 nearly there. Okay, this is the jack I've been using. It's the original metally facture jack. Um, I just put a bit of wood in that um, groove. You probably heard I was using a socket um, to lower it and raise it. Uh, someone had made this little adapter for the end, um, but that's the original jack handle and it's got a little lever to change the direction I think. Uh, no, no, how does it work? Oh no, you just put it on either way. <laughs> so to raise it says and to lower. So whichever side it goes on is so it's just got a ratchet that works in one direction so you put it on either way to raise or lower I've never used it I have to say because the reason this has got a this shape in it is because uh, the original instructions show to jack the car upon the sills and if you look underneath the body um, it comes back up so that's the shape of the fiberglass under the sills that it would locate onto. So to the front. the front, then we've got the box section of the chassis that runs between the uh, front uprights where the wishbones attach. So this is our jacket up at the front. This is sat on its dollies at the moment, so it's obviously a bit higher. But you can get a trolley jack underneath there. And I've got a big piece of wood. And I get it something like even. And simply jack it up on that. No problem at all. And then when it's high enough, um, I'll put axle stands um, underneath each end. Um, if I want to get rid of the jet, well, if I was working under it, I'd definitely put it on axle stands. Um, if I was wanting to support it, not on the chassis, um, so when I was doing that tracking measurement, I wanted to um, try and get the suspension to go back to normal ride height. I actually put a block, uh, so I took the wheels off and I put a block underneath the trunnion at the bottom and set it down on the trunnions which I was a bit <laughs> questioning whether I should do that um, but yeah I was assured it would be okay and it was okay but normally I would just jack it up on the chassis and put it on axle stands here okay that's straightforward enough I'll just let that back down So that's it, um, that's how I go about jacking up the, uh, the car and supporting it. Okay, see you soon.